What's going on, everybody? Drew Peters, the mad scientist at Dragon Pharma, and welcome back to another installment of Dragon Science Mythbusters. Today, on Dragon Science Mythbusters, we're going to be covering a very common misconception. You can only absorb 25 grams of protein at one time. Where did that myth come from? What started it? And what science supports that, if any? Now, Let's dissect this a little bit and see exactly how this may have come to be. The origins of the 25 grams of protein at one time stems from actually data on whey protein. But one thing that's important to note right off the bat is many people get the word absorb confused to what made the concept of how do you maximize muscle protein synthesis. I'll explain a little bit further. Now, the 25 gram mark is really referring to what amount at one time has a potential to maximize muscle building. Also revered and evaluated by the rate of muscle protein synthesis, the way the body repairs and regrows muscle following exercise. A key point as we examine this is remember, not all amino acids from protein go to skeletal muscle for building lean muscle. It also provides essential amino acids that serve as the building blocks for a variety of proteins, enzymes, hormones, and other tissues of the body to maintain and repair and of course support normal function. Now, with this 25 gram mark, the research specifically supports that maximum muscle protein synthesis is achieved roughly two and a half to three grams of the amino acid leucine, one of the three branch chain amino acids. This is what's known as the leucine threshold. What this means is basically there's a dose dependent relationship. When you ingest leucine, it will increase the amount of muscle protein synthesis at a dose dependent response. This level of how much response you get tends to top out between anywhere from two and a half to three grams. And therefore, that amount that's found in about 25 grams of whey protein is where it stems so you can only absorb 25 grams at one time. However, that's not the case. You can and will absorb more protein than that and that's for another video, but the key is for maximizing muscle protein synthesis, that's where that number tends to cap out. Now, there's new research and new data and new ingredients that have, have found ways to override this, one, by using less protein to get a higher muscle protein synthesis response, or two, to take this effect higher. Such ingredients would be Nutrition 21 Velocitol. That is another video and another topic, however, it's important to note that there's different ways around this in today's literature. Now. How do you maximize muscle protein synthesis to be the next question here. It's traditionally seen that 0.4 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per meal from a high quality protein source will help you allow you to reach this leucine threshold. For most people, that's anywhere from 20 to 40 grams of protein. And this is done on studies for people between 50 to 100 kilograms. That's 110 to 220 pounds. Now, why is there such a range of 20 to 40 grams to reach this number? There's a few independent variables here, such as how much lean muscle mass a person has, and also the protein source. Different sources of protein have varying levels of leucine content. Whey protein has around 12% leucine content, so about 25 grams is optimal. Chicken is only 7.5%, therefore equating to about 40 grams. Beef and pork, around 8%, egg is around 8.6, fish is around 8.1, casein around 9.3, and milk protein, which is a natural blend of whey and casein, is around 9.8. So, as you can see, if you want to maximize muscle protein synthesis, the sources can also depend on how much is optimal to reach this number. Now, a lot of people out there are starting to do plant-based diets or vegan diets. Plant proteins inherently have a lower leucine content, so therefore, more protein is needed per serving to help hit this maximum muscle protein synthesis response. More protein to get a higher amount of leucine. So, to maximize muscle protein synthesis, after ingestion, no matter how much is ingested, it takes about two to three hours to reach baseline. So therefore, it's also not optimal to consume huge amounts at once if you want to maximize this response. That'll be for another video on how to maximize this response through meal timing, how much protein you can absorb as a whole during the day, and a few other factors. They'll go on too long just for one video. So, the key point is you can and will absorb more than 25 grams of protein at one time. Don't get confused with absorption versus maximizing muscle protein synthesis, and you'll be perfectly fine. The other part we're going to cover in another video too is some people will discuss gluconeogenesis, the conversion of amino acids into glucose, fat storage, so on and so forth. There's a whole lot more myth busting to be done. So, 
25 grams of protein isn't the maximum the mouth can be absorbed. This myth is effectively busted. This has been Drew Peters with Dragon Size Mythbusters busting the myth on you can only absorb 25 grams of protein at one time. As always, references are listed below, and if you have any questions, feel free to hit them in the comments. Oh,